So for the weather forecast for this upcoming Saturday, we will be having a warm front coming in with a high of 81 and a low of 60. Now for the midday news, we will be having our next segment on renowned wildlife expert Susanna Perkins going into great detail about our next fantastic species of the week, the amugulated dusty cyanus. Take it away, Susanna. Yes, thank you, Sydney and Nicole, for the very kind introduction. My pleasure to be here. Like she mentioned before, my name is Susanna Perkins. I'm a wildlife expert, and I'm currently here in the Arizona deserts to explain to y'all about the amugulated Dusty Zionis, the fantastic species of the week. You will notice very soon that the amulgulated Dusty Zionis, or Dusty Zionis for short, is very similar looking to the turkey vulture. Some might even say they're long lost brothers. The turkey vulture and the Dusty Zionis also has in common their role slash niche in the environment. They help clean up the environment. They're the scavengers. Uh oh, we're gonna have to move to the studio for our safety as there might be a dust storm soon. So if you want to hear more about the Dusty Zionis, then make sure you tune in back after the commercial on Midday News Channel 5. We'll see you soon. Welcome back after that wonderful commercial break to the Channel 5 Midday News. Um, if you don't know my name, my name is Susanna Perkins. I'm a wildlife expert and for the next uh, fantastic species of the week I'll be talking specifically about the emulgulated Dusty Zyanus or Dusty Zyanus for short. The Dusty Zyanus eats insects, other smaller birds, and small mammals even though they do mostly feed off of their dead prey as they are the scavengers. Um, they help clean up the environment which is also the similar role that's played by the turkey vulture as well. <clears throat> How it's able to survive in their environment in the Arizona desert is it's able to fly and has different pigments in their cells called melanocytes to be able to blend in with the surroundings when they want to get live prey, which is very rare, um, to be able to sneak up on their prey to be able to get them. Another feature that the Dusty Zyanus also has is that it's able to store water in its feathers since the Dusty Zyanus is native to the Arizona deserts, which is a biome that doesn't receive a lot of rain. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, it's niche to control the population and to clean up its environment as a scavenger and its taxonomy the or the branch of science conservative classification is an ave since it's in the vulture family. Its population is 73,000 in the Arizona deserts and surrounding areas. It also lives on land and some adaptations that an amogulated Dusty Zyanus has is that it's able to camouflage with its surroundings um, when they want to catch live prey like I mentioned before. It can fly as well and females are able to lay eggs for reproduction. Now, the Dusty Zyanus doesn't really have any specific symbiotic relationships um, specifically when we're looking at the Arizona deserts. But if we look at the Dusty Zyanus's long lost sibling, the, tur uh, the turkey vulture, or we can look at the black vulture, specifically in the Savannah desert, then the vulture will feed off of the lion's leftover prey and the lion is unharmed. So that will be a very um, symbiotic relationship. <clears throat> the Dusty Zyanus will have competition with the vulture since they are so similar in the role and how they both look as well. As for anatomy, the Dusty Zyanus has a beak for eating its prey, a short neck for moving its head around, and it has deep brown feathers with the melanocytes inside that allows for the camouflage. It also has short black legs and a sharp tail for defense. Now. As for food chain slash food webs that the Dusty Zyanus is a part of, we took a look at the long lost sibling, the turkey vulture. And if you will look here on the screen, we have the turkey vulture at the top um, that eats the mountain lion and eats the fox. And the fox um, eats the mouse and eats the rabbit and the mountain lion eats the deer. And then for our other one, 
we have the turkey vulture at the top as the scavenger and we have the giant desert centipede as the decomposer um, and the turkey vulture will feed off of the desert coyote and the red-tailed hawk so those are just some more to back up the information now as for our last but definitely not least topic that we have to cover on the emogulated Desi Zionis, we have um, natural events, human effects, and population specific events that directly affect the Desi Zionis. As for the natural event, we have dust storms. I mean, I even had to come back to the studio as a result of dust storms, but dust storms can definitely affect um, the Desi Zionis. I mean, it has dusty in the name. Um, as for human effects, we have the more roadkill and things to feed off of slash more breeding, but more towards the roadkill. Um, as people are traveling more and as technology has advanced, um, there, there's been an increase in roadkill, which leads to an increase in the diet of a dusty Zionist and could possibly lead more to uh, more um, uh, offspring of Dusty Zionuses as well. Well, folks, that is all that I have um, to educate you guys about on the amalgulated Dusty Zionus. So if you happen to come to an Arizona desert, you might even see a Dusty Zionus um, for yourself. But make sure to be safe and please do not come into contact with a Dusty Zionus if you happen to see one in the wild. <clears throat> Thank you guys for having me on Channel 5 Midday News. Um, again, my name is Susanna Perkins. I am a wildlife expert, and now I will be turning it back to the main studio, back to Sydney Nicole, our great meteorologist. Take it away, Sydney. Channel 5 Midday News wants to thank Susanna Perkins for covering our fantastic species of the week segment for this week. I definitely think I learned a lot about Dusty Zionuses, to where honestly I could be a Dusty Zionus expert if that truly was a thing. After this, we will have a new episode of The Masked Dancer premiering, and also in a couple of hours at midnight, we will have Marcus Thomas covering tonight's Midnight Mingle debate about whether or not is TikTok truly a platform that enables people's creativity or is it actually a toxic platform? You can start to send in your opinions about the debate at 1-800-667-1111. And as always, us here at Channel 5 Midday News, we'll see you next time.